Moses laid hands on Joshua, prayed for him, and the same spirit of wisdom that was on Moses went over onto Joshua. Paul laid his hands on Timothy and prayed for him, and the same spirit of faith and leadership went from Paul over onto Timothy. My friends, mantles, anointings can be transferred. Let's talk more about it on today's program of Pure Gold. I'm Pastor Stephen Brooks, and welcome, Brooks, and welcome. Be removed and be cast into what? Cast into what? Thing that you speak out of your mouth and command. Be healed in the name of the Lord. Behold us, the Lamb of God. God says, God says, Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Stephen Brooks. Welcome today to Pure Gold. Why don't you grab your Bibles and meet me in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29. Let's drop down to verse 5. It says, I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you, and your sandals have not worn out on your feet. Here we see the man of God, Moses, speaking to the nation of Israel, and he's declaring how faithful God has been to his people through that very difficult journey. But we must consider something. It says, your clothes have not worn out on you, and your sandals have not worn out on your feet. Now, we understand that the whole wilderness experience was a transitory experience. They're supposed to get into the Canaan land, the promised land. My friends, that's where God wants you to be. That's where God wants you to be having victory at. And in order to do that, you're going to eventually need to get some new clothes. Now, we thank God for that miracle that took place. But how many of you, honestly, if you ask yourself, the question, honestly, want to wear the same pair of shoes over and over again for 40 years? What if you had to wear the same pair of pants for 40 years, even if they looked as new as when you originally bought them, you still have been looking at them every single day for 40 years? What about the same shirt? Even if it's sustained for 40 years, after a while, that color of desert brown, starts to get a little bit old. My friends, not only in the natural do we need uh, a new expression, and that's what color is. It's an expression of creativity. But in the spiritual, you also need some new things in your wardrobe, and that's why there are times and seasons in your life when the Lord can release a new, a new mantle, a new anointing upon your life. And we see that took place in the life of Elisha when a new mantle was placed upon him. And we find this revealed in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2. In verse 1, it says, And it came to pass, when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now, the man of God endeavors to give Elisha opportunity to step back and say, hey, you, you look a little tired. You've been running with me all over the country and all these meetings. You need a little break. And he's like, oh, no, I know that you're about to leave and I'm not going to miss what I've been waiting for for years and years. And sometimes when you're really seeking the Lord, some of the really special things that God does, they certainly don't happen overnight. The Lord does, however, reward faithfulness. And Elisha has been just that. He has been right at the side of the man of God, serving him, standing with him, when Elijah was criticized, Elisha was criticized. When difficulties came to the man of God, Elisha also experienced that those same type of things. But he was still there. And although they're going to these various schools of the prophets because Elijah wants to make sure everything is in order before he leaves, notice that as they visit these three sites, which are Bethel and then Jericho, and then Jordan. Every one of them in the natural is a decrease in elevation. 
Sometimes when you're really hungry for the Lord and the things of the Lord and you're pursuing God uh, and you're going all out uh, and you see others that are not even trying to really serve the Lord, but yet it seems like they're getting blessed and moving along and you think, Lord, what's going on with my life? My friends, that's often a work of the Spirit where in the natural, it may appear that you're going backwards or going downhill, but it's actually a setup from the Lord. These times of difficulty and challenging times are meant on purpose by God to wean out to thin out those who are not serious about walking in the rich blessings of the Lord, walking in the anointing, walking in the power of the Spirit. Woo, praise the Lord. And you'll have plenty of opportunities to step off on the side, even perhaps right up until the last moment before you receive your breakthrough. And Elijah says, hey, we're going to the next village. Why don't you just stay back and take a break? He does that three times and Elisha says, no, I'm going with you all the way. I've come too far to drop out right here at the end. So they press on. Now, verse 7, and 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now, Elijah took his mantle. What is a mantle? A mantle in the Old Testament was an outward representation of, of the anointing or the Spirit of God that would be upon the prophet. And it was often represented, perhaps at times, by an animal skin that the prophet would wear over his shoulders. Sometimes it would be a special garment that would be draped over the shoulders. And the shoulders are representative of governmental authority or, as we would say, kingdom authority. Because remember, it says about Christ, the government will be upon his shoulders. So when the mantle comes to rest on a person, oftentimes it will be laid over the shoulders. So he took his mantle and he rolled it up and he struck the water and it was divided this way and that so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Now we come to a historical moment. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So when the man of God asked the servant, what is it that you want? Ask. He has the authority to issue a blank check. And Elisha can fill it out however he wants because there is an empowerment to back it. In times like that, you must know in your heart what it is that you desire. And if you'll dig deep, you'll know that God put that desire on the inside of you. And my friends, he goes for it. He says, I want the double portion. Double portion of what? Of the anointing, the prophetic anointing that's upon Elijah to now come upon him. Did he get it? Don't go away. Come back. And I want you to see how we got the double portion and how God has a double portion for you as well. In the Gospel of Mark, the disciples came to Jesus, asking why they could not perform a difficult miracle. Jesus answered them by saying that only through fasting and prayer could the miracle happen. Fasting and prayer are the keys to unlocking God's nuclear power, a spiritual explosion of blessing and power in your life. In his book, Fasting and Prayer, best-selling author and prophetic teacher Stephen Brooks reveals the amazing things that fasting and prayer have achieved in his life and how you can experience the same in your life. God has designed fasting and prayer to be a platform for your spiritual empowerment. Whenever you combine fasting together with prayer that is done in faith, my friends, you're going to experience new levels of breakthrough and new levels of miracles. Get ready. God's going to move in your life. Discover how visions, healings, and miracles have happened through the ages through the simple commitment to fast and pray and how these timeless principles of obedience can make the impossible possible in your life. Order Fasting and Prayer by Stephen Brooks now, and you'll also receive the Triple Power Package, a three-disc audio CD teaching that explains the supernatural empowerment that comes with a closer relationship with God. Order the Supernatural Power Package, including Fasting and Prayer by Stephen Brooks and the Triple Power Package three-disc audio CD teaching. 
Call now to receive the Supernatural Power Package, 336-990-9001. That's 336-990-9001. Or get the Supernatural Power Package online at stephenbrooks.org. The great prophet of God, Elijah, he turned to his young mentor and he said to him, ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Because we all know he's about to leave in just a few more minutes. And Elisha said, please, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, you have asked a hard thing. Now, why would that be hard? Is there anything too difficult for the Lord? No, it's not too hard for the Lord. It's just that the old prophet, he's still trying to get across to the young man of God who's going to step in his stead. He's trying to convey to him, hey, this is a package deal. In other words, you can have the anointing. You can have the double portion. You can have the signs and the wonders and the miracles, but you're going to get everything else that comes with it. And that includes the fierce persecution. That includes these Issues like the character of Jezebel trying to cut his head off and trying to kill him and being chased all over the country and sometimes even being hunted. He understood what it was like to go through severe persecution and he's trying to tell Elisha, don't think that you can dodge this part of the mantle that comes with it as well. Does that shake Elisha? Does he say, oh, I didn't know about that? No, my friends, he's in it all the way. And so Elijah tells him, Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you, but if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot, a fire appeared and horses of fire and separated the two of them and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Hallelujah, what a way to go. Now, Elisha saw it and he cried out, my father, my father, and my friends, I hope that you have a spiritual father in your life. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother, honor your parents. But so often, God wants you to have a spiritual father. The apostle Paul said, you have 10,000 teachers in Christ. But he said, I'm your spiritual father. I'm the one that mentored you and won you to the Lord and mentored you in the primary things of God. And so you need to always be mindful to honor your spiritual parents praise God. And we see that with the Apostle Paul, that the anointing that was upon his life, so much of that grace and anointing was transferred over to his spiritual son, Timothy. I'm telling you that mantles and anointings can be imparted from one generation to the next. It's not God's intent that that anointing or that mantle go to the grave with that man of God. It needs to be released and transferred over. We also know that with the great man of God, Moses, that he even laid hands on Joshua. And we see that in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 9. And he imparted to him the same anointing and tremendous wisdom that was upon Moses' life. It went over to Joshua when hands were laid on him. Praise God. Now, back to our story here with Elijah and Elisha. Elisha is now watching the departed saint leave, and he notices that the mantle falls. So what he does in verse 12 is that he sees it. He took a hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah. Many years ago, about 20 years ago, I was walking through a store and I heard a lady cry out in a loud voice, where are the mantles? <laughs> she was looking for a fireplace mantle. And, uh, but it rung in my spirit with such a prophetic declaration that I said, God, where are the mantles? Where's the mantles of the great saints of old who walked in the signs and wonders? Oh Lord, we need it back in the earth today. And not only that, because of the inflation of sin, because of the inflation of lawlessness and iniquity, we need a double portion of what they walked in. Hallelujah. And I believe that God is releasing mantles into the earth today. Praise the Lord. So he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also struck the water, it was divided this way and that, and Elisha crossed over. Now it says in verse 15, 
When the sons of the prophets who were from Jericho saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah rest on Elisha. Yes, my friends, and the new ministry of Elisha is now launched, and he steps forth into a powerful ministry. Now, theologians say that if you study in detail the miracle prophetic ministry of Elijah, there are recorded in Scripture eight distinct miracles. Now, I'm sure in his ministry there were a whole lot more than that, but there are eight that are recorded. Now, when you look carefully at the ministry of Elisha, which spanned a long time of 55 years of prophetic ministry, at the conclusion of his ministry, there are recorded in Scripture 16 notable miracles. Let me ask you a question. Did he get the double? He got the double. Hallelujah. And God's got a blessing for you too, my friends. Mantles are still being released from heaven, and it's time to get something new in your spiritual wardrobe. Praise the Lord. You know, I was talking to an old spiritual mentor, a friend of mine, a Dr. Wade Taylor, when he was in his 80s. And I said, Wade, I said, over the years, you've been involved in various moves of God. Uh, you were even tied into the latter rain movement. You were tied into the healing revival. And you were tied into uh, the presence of the Lord, move of the Spirit. I said, how many mantles have you had imparted into your life? And he said, Stephen, that's a good question. He said, actually, last night I was thinking about that very same thing, and I asked the Lord about it, and I stopped and I counted up all of the mantles over 50-something years of ministry that had come into my life, and he said, I counted 27 distinct different mantles. Now, Dr. Taylor himself laid hands on me, and he imparted his mantle to me, and he also imparted the mantle of three old-time Pentecostal preachers that greatly influenced his life, one of those men being Walter Butler. He laid hands on me, and he said, Stephen, he said, I transfer my mantle to you now. And then he named the names of those other three men. He had been carrying their mantles for decades. And he said, I release those mantles to you now as well. And something fresh and new came into my life. And it was a special touch from the Lord. And God has a new wardrobe ready to open up from heaven to give to you as well. I would like to share with you a special resource that I really believe will take your prayer life, your devotional life to a new level with the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a two DVD set of extensive teaching on the subject of praying at night. While many people pray during the day, which is wonderful, there are special opportunities to draw near to the Lord during the nighttime hours. I want you to be blessed by these two DVDs. As an extra bonus, we're going to include a special teaching that I did on supernatural fragrances and what their meanings are. While many Christians smell supernatural fragrances, they often don't understand their prophetic meaning. We're going to unlock that you're going to greatly enjoy walking in supernatural fragrance. Please avail yourself to these mighty spiritual resources. They are an investment into your wonderful walk with the Lord. When we look at the life of Joseph and the coat of many colors that he wore, it was a special coat, but it was also symbolic the various colors representing various anointings that are found in Christ. We have the seven spirits of the Lord, different anointings, different attributes, but it also represents the different mantles that can be released from Christ himself, the head of the church, to his people so they can be effective in what God has called them to do. So it is very much possible to have more than one mantle, to be multi-mantled with various colors and anointings, but you'll also find that there's a primary mantle, a primary primary anointing, how can I say it, one primary garment from that wardrobe that you're going to wear more than others. And it was a prophetic mantle that I received about 20 years ago uh, from an experience with the Lord that dramatically altered my ministry. My ministry at that time was local, and I was just working in a certain uh, state, in a certain area. But after this mantle was given to me, my ministry began very rapidly to go internationally. Now get ready, because I'm going to pray for many of you in just a moment. You're going to receive something from the Lord. Now, I had a vision 
And in this vision, it happened at night. I was taken into the spirit realm in a place that in scripture is called the second heaven. If you look up in the atmosphere where an airplane flies at about 30,000 feet, that's where I was taken. And that's also an area that's very dangerous in the spirit realm. It's where Satan has... Uh, strongholds. There are satanic strongholds up there. And so I was taken in the, to the second heaven in the spirit realm, and I, I saw an enemy camp. I was placed behind a large rock outcropping, and I could look down into like a valley in that spirit area, and I saw to me what looked like an enemy camp. I saw demons that were marching around something, guarding it and protecting it. They had huge spears that were about 18 feet tall with razor sharp daggered pointers on the end. And over the top of this camp were two large demonic bat-like creatures that had huge black leathery wings that were flying over protecting the top. And this whole camp was being very, very carefully guarded. And I was just looking at that kind of hiding behind these rocks. And I thought, Lord, what is that? What are they protecting? And when I was thinking about that, suddenly two angels from the Lord. Now these angels had white robes and they had wings and they were huge and fast. They reminded me of Air Force jets. They flew down very quickly into that valley and swooped and circled around the enemy camp. When they did that and the demons saw them, the demons got so agitated and angry and those two angels went whoop, and they took off like, like Thunderbird jets. They took off and those evil spirits just, they were so mad, they took off after the two angels. Then the voice of the Lord came to me saying, go quickly, those are my two decoy angels. And those angels had done their job. They cleaned out the whole camp. Well, I ran down that hill into that valley area and ran up on what they were protecting. And when I saw it, I was greatly shocked. To my surprise, it was a stack of clothing, and it was clothing uh, that was stacked oh, uh, about this high. It was in a rectangular block, maybe about 15 feet long, about six feet, six feet high, but it was so dense. It was packed with literally millions and millions of pieces of clothing. I saw all kinds of, uh, uh, I saw hats and boots and scarves, and I saw gloves. I, I saw all types of different clothing that would, people would wear from all different career fields, and I said, Lord, I said, what is this? And the Lord said, these are unclaimed mantles worn previously by my saints. And when they came to be with me in heaven, when they finished their assignment on earth, many of them never transferred their mantle on. Their mantles are still in the earth, but the enemy has taken them captive. And uh, I knew instantly that God had a mantle for, it, for me in that stack. So I took my arm and I plunged it all the way up to my shoulder. I plunged it all the way in into that stack of clothing. And I, I, I got a hold of it. I knew it before I even pulled it out. I knew that's mine. And I grabbed it and I yanked it and I pulled it out. And when I held it up to my surprise and looked at it, I said, oh my goodness, there's a blue sweatshirt. Uh, see, blue represents the open heavens. It represents the prophetic and I've always liked to wear sweatshirts because when I travel, I'm not wearing a suit on an airplane or something like that. So I, I like to wear sweatshirts in my uh, leisure time. And so I said, well, Lord, that's wonderful. And the Lord told me this is a mantle that was worn, he said, by a trusted prophet of mine. He told me the name of the prophet. He told me where he lived. He said he used to live off the, uh, the, uh, the coast of Scotland on a small island. Told me when he lived in church history, which was about 1,400 years ago. And he said, his mantle, is now yours. And I took that, that garment and I pulled it over my head and pulled it down and pushed my arms to the sleeve. It was a perfect fit. Now, something happened to me after I had that experience. Within just a few days, the spirit realm began to open up to me and I, I began to see into the spirit realm at time and I could see angels. And I was like, what in the world was going on? And then I could go to the meetings and I could start ministering to people prophetically very accurately. And I said, Lord, what's, what's happening? This is a new dimension I've never had before. I began to study that man. I found him in church history. He was known for having experienced consistently angelic visitations. So the same prophetic anointing he walked in came over onto my life and my ministry has never been the same since. Now, mantles can be for ministers, but there's also mantles in every area of your career field, whatever that would be. Don't go away. I want to pray that the mantle that God has for you, you'll receive it. 
I'll be right back. Imagine being homeless, living in the street, out of a cardboard box, with no future and no hope. That was once very much real life for best-selling author and prophetic teacher, Stephen Brooks. In his book, The Sacred Anointing, Stephen Brooks shares his personal testimony of being delivered from poverty and entrusted with a worldwide ministry only through the anointing of God. Inspiring and challenging, you won't find Stephen Brooks' amazing personal story of redemption anywhere else. The Sacred Anointing can help you realize the radical difference and exciting possibilities awaiting you through God's precious anointing on your life. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's power to remove every burden from off of your shoulders and to break every yoke from off of your neck. My friends, the anointing of God can be increased upon your life. When the anointing is strong, you'll have the power to live your dream. The Sacred Anointing by Stephen Brooks will challenge your understanding of who God is and how He can fulfill the emptiness in your spirit, whether you've been in church all your life or never darkened its doors. Order The Sacred Anointing now, and you'll also receive the audio CD teaching, Spirit Trek. In this anointed teaching, Stephen Brooks unlocks the mystery of speaking in tongues and how it can take you to new levels in your spiritual life. Order the Miraculous Manifestations Package, including The Sacred Anointing by Stephen Brooks and the audio CD teaching, Spirit Trek. Call now to receive the Miraculous Manifestations Package, 336-990-9001. That's 336-990-9001. Or get the Miraculous Manifestations Package online at stephenbrooks.org. My friend, I believe you watching this program today is a pre-planned prophetic event that God had orchestrated for you. If you're ready to receive your new mantle, lift your hands right now in prayer. Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that from the wardrobe of heaven, you would reach in and release upon your servant, your child, that special garment, that new mantle that you have for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, my friend, receive it now by faith in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you what that new mantle is, and it is a double portion to empower you to do what God has assigned for you to do. Now, if you're watching today's program and you've never received the greatest gift, which is Christ as Savior, then pray this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I am a sinner, but you died for sinners. So, Jesus, Wash me with your blood. I give you my heart. I give you my life. Jesus, write my name in your book of life and step into my life and take control of my life. Jesus, I pray in your name. Amen. And my friends, the Lord has heard that prayer and you now belong to him. You belong to the family of God. Every gift of God is good. Walk in the mantle that God has for you.